the Honorable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope I'm not getting all this applause because my colleagues are glad to see the backside. No. 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 I'll have a few jokes about that later. <laughs> A very interesting evening, fabulous hearing from, from all the members and really touched by the speeches of my colleagues. So I thought I would start on a lighter note. I was impressed by my former colleague Libby Davies, who actually recounting, recounted in detail her first day as an elected member of Parliament on the Hill. I thought, how she remember that? And then I remembered my first moment stepping onto the polished marble floors of center block and almost doing the splits. <laughs> so sage advice for all the new female MPs that will come in the next election. Make sure you have rubber soles on your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have marble floors anywhere. We lost those. I'm so happy I got to serve in center block. I miss those stained glass windows. Mm -hmm. So first off, I want to thank my brother and my niece for being there for me. Keeping me, fed, keeping me fed and my spirits high. The whole world deserves a brother like mine. Mm -hmm. I'm equally indebted to my wonderful friend Carol, who never thinks of politics. And it's a delight to come home and talk to her because we talk about everything else. The tulips are up. Oh, it's beautiful walk in the forest. That's the kind of friend you need where you're a politician. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Carol, who's kept my house and garden whole. And to my dear friends, Don and Hans, Francis, Cheryl, Darlene, Stephen, for endless friendship and support, my friends from across Canada. I extend my deep gratitude to my amazing campaign manager, Erica Bowinkle, and my wonderful campaign teams for all four elections. I notice not many people, I think, have talked about their campaigns, but good heavens, that's a big part of who we are, right? We wouldn't be here if you didn't campaign. They donated incomparable amounts of time and energy to send me to Ottawa, and what fun we had on those campaigns. So much fun canvassing with youth. If you've never canvassed with young kids, try it out. Change your life. Among my fondest memories of an election win was dancing in a pub with the visiting Mexican soccer team, excited a socialist had been elected for Alberta. As with my colleagues, I was the first NDP first woman elected in my riding, but gosh darn it, I was the first NDP elected in Alberta in 25 years, and then re-elected and re-elected again. I continue to thank people who say they worked on my campaign, and far too often I have to say thanks. I didn't have a chance to thank you before because Eric had kept me out canvassing 24 hours a day. <laughs> Absolute profound accolades are sent to the dedicated Edmonton Strathcona Federal Constituency Association, who for 11 years helped at every constituency event, serving refreshments, flipping burgers, or sweeping hall floors. They're, they are the source of democracy in Canada, and they're the unsung heroes, <laughs> volunteers. And you know, they never get volunteer awards because they're quote unquote partisan, we need to change that. But the two often unsung heroes of any MP's office are their staff. I've been blessed with the most amazing group of dedicated people in both my Hill office and constituency. Too many over the 11 years to list in my Hill office, but thank you, Lorena and Michelle, so great to finally have an Albertan working with me on the Hill. We need more Albertans here. <laughs> Isn't that right, Marie? <laughs> Can't see Marie. <laughs> and the many before that. Angela was my first fabulous legislative assistant, and I still consider her a dear friend. Currently holding the fort in the riding, Lisa, Melissa, and Nigel moved on. Daniel, Addy, now with Amnesty International. I mean, so many incredible staff that I had, and we kept saying, why are you wasting your time here, Addie? Get out and get a law degree. Graduated from University of Ottawa Law School. Organized all the rallies at, at the American Embassy in favor of the bright things. And is now articling with Amnesty International. Where was I? <laughs> Thank you to my leaders, Jack Layton, Tom Mulcair, Nicole Turmel, and now the Member of Parliament for Burnaby South. Where would we be without our leaders inspiring us? And thank you, Rob, 
Christiane, and the incorrigible Anthony, <laughs> and Teresa, now at City Hall. But my gosh, I know we drive you crazy, but you're in our hearts. <laughs> my marvelous caucus colleagues, I know they're laughing. Can't believe she's saying that about us. <laughs> it's been my challenge to try to get you all to think like an Albertan. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that I'm also leaving behind a few friends from other parties. I thank all the parliamentary officers and staff. I extend a heartfelt thanks to the parliamentary security officers who during the 2014 attack on the Hill put their lives at serious risk to keep us safe. Thank you. Canadians fully comprehend the dual role of members of Parliament or the limitations to our capacity to tackle every need or concern the constituents bring to us, despite our desire to remedy every frustration with failed service or policy. I must attest to the heavy hearts of my staff for our failure to resolve every immigrant or every refugee claim, every request for better services or better policies that actually help people. But we have so celebrated those moments of pure joy when our efforts helped a constituent gain their long-awaited citizenship to obtain a federal grant or a veteran's benefit or a dispute with CRA. <laughs> <laughs> I remain surprised and grateful still when a constituent approaches me in the street, in airports, in the grocery store, when I'm traveling overseas. I'll tell you, those Edmonton Strathcona constituents are everywhere. <laughs> They approached me to thank me for my service, and it's always unexpected and equally appreciated. It keeps me going, and I most certainly believe that's the same for all members of Parliament. Mm -hmm. My 11 years serving as a member of Parliament were diverse, and often with unexpected turns. It's been a privilege serving as on the executive of the Canada-Ukraine Parliamentary Friendship Group and supporting Ukraine through election monitoring and hosting fabulous young Ukrainian interns. It's been my honor to represent the extraordinary Francophone community in my riding. Mm -hmm. I was privileged as a lawyer to benefit from the support of University of Ottawa Law School um, interns, invaluable in helping me craft my bills and motions. I encourage every university and every legislature to introduce the same kind of program. I participated in many of the climate cops, inspired greatly by the interventions by NGOs and Indigenous peoples. I had the honor of meeting with the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan government in exile during the commemoration of their 60 years in exile and look forward to seeing the president again tomorrow here in Ottawa. I'm blessed with a wonderful Tibetan Canadian intern. I traveled to West Africa with the Governor General and to East Africa to meet with parliamentarians. I held a remarkable array of critic, of critic portfolios. <laughs> Environment, Indigenous Affairs, Western Economic Diversification, Public Works, Natural Resources, and now International Development. I don't know if I'm missing any. I had a lot of them. <laughs> I advocated in the House and at the UN for a nuclear disarmament treaty and on enforceable measures for sustainability. No surprise to those who know me well, I infused an environmental angle into every one of those portfolios. <laughs> I issued a report on the impact of oil sands on water. I proposed strengthened public and indigenous rights and federal laws on toxins, impact assessment, energy regulation, navigable waters, and sustainable development, and trade deals. In public works, I proposed investment in energy efficiency for federal buildings to save taxpayer dollars. In transport, I proposed stronger measures to regulate dangerous uh, rail cargo and engage, engage communities directly. That came because of my personal experience with a major uh, CN derailment into my lake, Lake Wabamum. And the government still has not taken action on that. I have four times tabled an Environmental Bill of Rights, and I will be tabling that bill tomorrow for the last time. Yeah, yeah. So I wish yeah, to thank yeah. all the environmental community Indigenous leadership who allow me to be one of their voices for change. Um, it's been an honor representing my constituents and having the privilege of fighting for environmental protection from the inside. Mm -hmm. And my retirement agenda, Mr. Speaker, is to get a rescue dog. My brother says, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs>